Hi. Hi. So please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jonas. I'm a CEO and co-founder of v Lab. Um, we're a company out of Vienna and we're building laser display components. And the aim is to build very high performance uh, VR display, as you can see here. So this is a um, laser backlit LCD, Ooh. which goes up to, to 10,000 nits currently, and we're going to push that up to 100,000 nits. That's pretty bright, no? Indeed. And we do this because uh, in uh, modern VR headsets, you lose a lot of light, right? You run your 10% duty cycle, you have 10 to 20% transmission through the lens system. So you need a very high panel brightness to start with. So we're going to push this up to 100,000 nits, so that you then still have a few thousand nits going to the eye. You're going to push it to 100,000? Indeed. Uh, because is it, it because of all the reflections and the waveguides and everything? or? What? No, I mean, in, in a VR headset, you just have the panel and the lens, right? And typically, you run the, the panel at 10% duty cycle, and you have a lens which has 10 to 20% transmission, like a pancake lens. So if you want to have a few thousand nits in the in the eye, so if you want to have like highlights, then you need a few thousand nits. Meta showed actually a 20,000 nits to the eye prototype. So this is where this is going for. 10 times higher efficiency, 10 times higher brightness, 50% larger color gamut mm -hmm. than what? So this is comparing to, for example, uh, OLED or standard LCD panels. So because you have laser, you're going to have a much higher uh, color gamut. You can get up to almost 100% REC 2020. All right. And this is uh, some of your information here? Yes, yes. Uh, so you could put it right here in the projector? This is for the AI, indeed. This is the prototype here on the right. And that could be a laser DLP? Or laser, how do you do? This is a laser L course, could also be a laser DLP. Uh, so what we what we built the, indeed we, we built the illumination in the end. So this is the base technology. You show how this is different from uh, from an LED. The LED is on the left, our chip is on the right, and you can see how, how collimated this illumination is compared to the LED, right? And collimation is, is really the key for all projection systems. And A and V are, are essentially projection systems, meaning they have a panel and they have a lens. So if you have collimation, you can get very high performance. Here you can see also a laser Elcos engine together with a, a diffractive combiner. And the key thing we can show here that I have a good image quality, so you don't have the laser artifacts. I can turn on and off the despeckling. I'm not sure if you can see now some kind of uh, grainy pattern. Now you don't see it anymore. So what do you turn off and on? Uh, this is a uh, despeckling technology we have developed. Because if you have laser illumination of an air course, typically what you have is a lot of speckle. And we essentially able to, to get rid of that. Uh, so what's going to be the future of projectors in VR, AR, compared to, or is it all projectors, even if when it's a micro LED and when it's an OLED, it's all projecting? Yeah, what's I mean, the difference? For AR, you always have projectors. Right, I mean, if, if it's now micro LED or if it's an Elcos or if it's an LBS, they're all projectors. So we're also building projectors. What we do is we take a standard LED Elcos projector, we rip out the LED and we put in the laser. That's so, the idea. Uh, on, on all these cool, amazing DLP projectors people buy, mm -hmm. and there's some really nice ones, so 500 euro with a laser mm -hmm. for the home, right? Yeah. Are but you doing something similar to that? Yeah? We, we just for, for AR. So we don't do uh, home cinema projectors or this kind of stuff. We just do for head mounted displays. Is it a different kind of laser? Different? Everything's different? Everything is different. At home, you need a very, very high amount of lumens. You need thousands of lumens. And you, you don't care much about the form factor. And it's a very, very well established technology. But we're solving very specific problems for, for AR. And uh, so, what more is in here? Is it the same yeah, information yeah, yeah. as some other? What's happened there? Yeah, you can see uh, some information um, about how the technology works in principle. How, what's the key project? Is this quantum dark chip? It's a glass that emits uh, laser rays. And on the right here, we kind of list how, how you apply this into a VR product. But you can find also a lot of my information on our web page. So you're so much better than these other solutions? Indeed, that's, that's the idea. This is coming like, um, because we can use lasers. All these other solutions don't use lasers. Are there thousands of different kinds of lasers in the world? Or how does, what is a laser? No, I mean a laser, I mean it, what you use is our laser dyes, right? And there are, there are not many different manufacturers, maybe four or five manufacturers. 
And they, they, these are like laser pointers and all kinds of stuff. And we just use them in a very particular way in these in these products. And uh, some LASIK sur surgeons they use lasers. Mm -hmm. It's not this. It's no. not gonna. Uh, what I'm trying to ask is, it's never gonna be too bright for the eyes. At some point, there's a limit, no? And. Uh, it's no, not, I mean, it's not going to be damaging. It's actually better. Or you actually, we need much more than this to have realistic AR. I mean, it's not damaging to the eye. So this, this is the one thing. So essentially, what we do, we we also use diffusers and we split the laser beam from one laser die to many thousand beams. So there's no eye safety. But of course, it's very different from what the laser eye surgeon is is using. So it's a very different kind of laser. And uh, here, I'm just going to have a look. Well, so what I'm looking at is that the brightest VR experience in the world? It's quite possible, yeah. I mean, for sure with an LCD. I mean, the Imagine also has some very similar brightness currently. They're also like around 10,000 nits. But this is quite possibly the brightest VR display currently. Which is pretty awesome that you have that. Thank you. Uh, but there are uh, micro LED, micro display manufacturer. They talk about millions of nits. Mm -hmm. What do they mean by that? Oh, that's before all the, the I mean, wave to, guys and everything? You have to differentiate VR and AR products because they're very different. So there's nobody doing um, micro LED for VR. They could probably do millions of nits if they wanted to. But uh, what they typically want to build is AR projectors. Uh, and the yeah, million of nits they have, uh, but this is before you, you put the combiner, essentially. Because you want to have like a thousand, two thousand nits into the eye from after an AR combiner, so you have to start with a lot of light. So if you take one million nits, and through all the optics and everything, at the end you get a thousand. It's like 0.1% of yeah, what's originally. It's so like the DLP nits is also very high in the beginning. Yeah. And the LCAS. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't tell you the exact number because it's really specified in lumen in the in this industry. So this is around two lumen currently. It's going to go up to ten lumen, and this is then transfers to like a few thousand nits to the eye. All right. Let me have a quick quick test on this one. Right. Mickey and Minnie are so clear in there. All right, so what's your background in the company and uh, who's your team around here? Uh, so my background is, is physics. I started, uh, did a PhD in quantum physics and then we, we use this kind of wavecut technology and span it off from the university to display products. Uh, we are around five years old. We're based in Vienna in Europe. Uh, part of my team is here. Um, we're over all 13 people. Can you introduce them? Yeah, we have, we have Hartmut over here, so our, our business developer. Yeah. And we have Shai over here, so he's running our um, light engine team. Yeah. And then we have Jan over there, so he's running the, the weight team. All right. Uh, can, let's ask, um, what's the challenge about a waveguide? And do you have to work on that to make the best product? We, we don't make these waveguide combiners. This is something we buy from partners. We, we build waveguides that go into the projector system. Which is a very, very important uh, distinction. The, the challenge is to make um, these many thousand beams happen, that they're all at the same brightness, that you have the correct mixture of the different colors, that you have a high degree of directionality. In the end, what it is, is a very high performance illumination system. Nice. And what, is, what are we looking at here? This is just an, an image on an uh, early prototype where we built an AR projector. So what you see here is, uh, is the LCOS panel. Uh, here you have a polarizing beam split and here you have the lens essentially which then projects the light out. And here what you see here is a much, much smaller version. So if you go on the left, if you go over the le on the left you can see here the metallic part. This is essentially the newer projector, it's much smaller. But this is now going down towards one cubic centimeter. This is still like three cubic centimeters fiber powered. Uh, what kind of conversations do you have here at the Display Week? Has it been an awesome week for you? Uh, it's been a very awesome week and everybody really likes this, this statement that we can make a like, reality mm -hmm. 10 times brighter because that's what people are, are looking for. And this is exactly what we can realize. This is the key uh, selling proposition of, of our technology. So how far are we from a uh, VR, AR world that it's like the matrix or you, you're like, it's like real life? Um, I, I think that uh, we can bring this technology to the market in around two, two years. It's going to be the key enabling to make very immersive VR experiences uh, where you can really not tell if you're like inside outside the, the real world. And also for AR, I mean, you always can be in the real world, 
uh, but it's really important that you can go outside and actually still see the image. This is one of the key challenges people have faced and had to put very strong shades like with HoloLens or Magic Leap and the idea is that you have essentially normal transparent glasses but you can still see the image. Because uh, when we're outside on a sunny day, there's a lot of nits. Yeah, there's a lot of nits, yeah. So it's okay to get a lot of nits. Yeah, I mean, more more. indeed, indeed. So, I mean, outside you're going to find things in sunny day, like 10,000 nits. So you're going to need to have an AR goggle, which is on a similar scale. So you, you want maybe also 10,000 nits and this kind of stuff. So, and this is what there has to be the big, big struggle, right? And that's why there's also billions of investment going micro LED, because they, so far it was the only technology that could deliver this high brightness and we an alternative. And we say, look, we, we don't have to wait five to 10 years for micro LED to actually work. We, we can put this on the market on a much faster time scale. So which technologies use the backlight? Uh, is DLP, Elcas? We can use both, but Elcas is the more accepted standard because it enables you to make more compact devices. But we could also equally use LCD. DLP. LCD is in the VR system. LCD you cannot use cannot for Cannot do transparent. We, we can do transparent, but I mean, it's not used in AR because LCD is very low um, transmission. So you want to have this high energy efficiency that DLP and Elcas give you. All right, any other? Uh, like you need to have some guys to come here with the eye tracking, perfect eye tracking, and what else is needed? The batteries that, that last forever. How, how long is your battery gonna last? I mean, we, I don't we, care if I have a huge power bank in the pocket, but yeah, do you yeah. have to? I mean, we're not building the entire glasses, right? So I mean, there's a lot of other things, another a lot of other companies necessary. But what we can do is we can um, quite drastically increase the efficiency. Yeah. This is something. Um, well, the efficiency. So what we, for example, have here, we, sh we show how, I mean, with the, we can increase efficiency because we can drop off the necessary illumination as your active pixels go down. Because it's a big topic in AR that uh, you typically only have a few pixels on and you don't want to use a lot of LNG to illuminate your Elcos panel. This so is something we can do with this technology. I get a comment, uh, this is the right solution for daylight AR glasses that could live up to a strong sun outside. Indeed. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. So we think that around 10,000 nits is really the maximum we will need, but that's what, what you should be doing. And I need to ask you, is your laser tech going to be used to make TVs? No. No, it's not going to be used to use TVs. Maybe in the far future, but we are really focused, solely focused on this displays because there we have a very strong advantage of ex existing technologies. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, just finished the video. Is it on a loop? What's happening in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find it. There you have it. Right. We are in Whatever Apple is launching next week is not bright enough. We're joking. But uh, who knows, maybe. Yeah, we'll All right, see. so you're ready to partner with everybody in the industry? Yes, we are ready to partner with anybody in the industry and bring this technology to the market. Can I send you some money? I would use WISE if I had to send you some money. I will not send you some money. I'm pretty sure I will not do that. But if I did, I would use WISE. It's really amazing. You can send money all over the world, 150 countries. You can send money to India. You can send money to the US. You can send money to Malaysia, Indonesia, Korea, everywhere. And then you get a local bank account. It's crazy. You get a bank account in the US and Europe. It's really amazing. And the fees are five to 10 times cheaper than your bank. So use it as a prepaid debit card. Buy a bunch of stuff on the internet. Save some money when you buy stuff in different currencies. Check my video where I explain a bunch of more stuff why this is a smart way and use my link so I can make some money. <laughs>